A fish hiding in the sea, Urachi? What is this? What's going on here? How's it going, everybody? So today I would like to show you something really special. So these are juvenile red emperor snappers. So uh, we are again here in the Philippines on Negos Island and during a night dive I saw this really interesting interaction between two very different species. So what are the urchins? These are fire urchins. These are relatively large sea urchins, probably I would say 30 centimeters in diameter. These are really venomous animals. So I once touched just a single spine by accident and it was like a mild electric shock. And so these are dangerous, dangerous echinoderms. Now that of course works to the advantage of these two small fish which are living here and they are safe right uh, there will be no predator trying to uh, snatch them up when they are just in between the spines of these urchins so as i said these are juveniles of a species called red emperor snappers they were probably about 15 centimeters long and these fish grow to much larger uh, 40 50 centimeters and they would also move to other habitats really where I found them now, this was in the seagrass and this was only about five or six meters deep. So, you know, people sometimes ask me, why do you night dive? <laughs> There's so many interesting things to see at night. So I've only ever seen this behavior twice and I've only seen it at night. Now, the fish were clearly aware of my presence, obviously because of the video light and I think they probably stick with the urchins most of the time, but you know they, they were particularly keen to kind of snuggle in between these venomous mines. And if you look at them, they were very clever in how to stay on the urchins and uh, or, you know right in between the spines without getting stung. So this is a fantastic symbiosis. You know, two species living together. What's the benefit for the fish? That's very clear, safety. What's the benefit for the urchin? I don't know. Uh, is there a benefit at all? Maybe they're removing parasites, uh, this could well be. Uh, sometimes juveniles of different species of fishes do this, but I don't know about this. So this might or might not be the case. This is definitely something I would love to learn more about. I don't think anybody knows whether there's a benefit for the, fi for the sea urchin in this symbiosis. Now, I saw something else which is really curious. So, a lot of species of crabs are decorator crabs. So, they put material on the top of their body as extra protection. Now, this crab put this, this enormously large log on its back. So the crab was probably 15 centimeters in diameter and that log was probably at least half a meter. And the log was overgrown with algae and hydroids, but it was just hilarious how this really relatively small crab was running around with this large piece of wood. It's a clumsy, but you know, it's probably a very good protection. There's another crab I believe this is some species of spider crab and this crab stood out with its unusually long legs. Now a lot of animals what they do when you approach them at night they dig into the sand. Now, you know it's it's inevitable that you disturb animals when you're night diving essentially. I like to believe that you know, the, the crab will make it right. It, it, it was just hiding for a couple of minutes and then after I left it went back out of the sand and you know, it continued doing what it is doing and the behavior nevertheless is really interesting to see so it, it very diligently worked to cover every last bit of its carpus of its body with sand and only two of its arms were sticking out and it was using them to both feed as well as cover itself with sand. You also see a lot of material flying around, lots of shrimp 
which are attracted to my video light. This, these are these you know, little snowflakes in front of the camera. So very interesting animals here at night. These, uh, all of this footage is from one single dive. Also, what I want to show you next, this is a beautiful glass anemone. And I believe it is of the genus Doflania. Uh, thanks to Dr. Andrea Crowther via Flickr for the ID. I hope I didn't mispronounce your name. And yeah, what a beautiful animal. I think that anemone actually benefited from my video light because it attracted the shrimp which the anemone was feeding on. So, as usual, please leave comments. I'm happy to answer all questions. Like and subscribe. Share this on your social media. And see you in a couple of days with more underwater footage from the Philippines. Bye.